Well, Mars has quite rightly stolen the show uh, in the last few months and culminating in its opposition uh, on Wednesday morning. But the event coming up towards the end of the year, the Great Conjunction, is probably a more significant uh, event, actually, for us. Um, many of you may have seen the Great Conjunction before. They occur every 20 years between Jupiter and Saturn. But this one uh, coming up at the end of the year is quite special in terms of its rarity. So the separation that we will see between Jupiter and Saturn as viewed from Earth will be its narrowest that has been seen since the Great Conjunction of 1623. So we'll actually have the opportunity to see through a telescope um, the planets closer together in, in, in the field of view than has probably ever been observed through a telescope. So the 1623 um, conjunction, we actually believe, wasn't actually um, observed through the telescope. So you could make history... Um, on the 21st of December this year, and we'll discuss a bit more about that shortly. So what is a conjunction? So um, in simple terms to describe it, it's a phenomenon where two bodies, two planetary bodies, and in this instance, uh, as viewed from the Earth, mark their closest approach together, and that's when we determine the conjunction. There are other types of conjunction, for example, the inferior and superior solar conjunction, and we've seen those um, and discussed those in the talks earlier in the year on, on Venus. The Great Conjunction is a term uh, we reserve principally for the conjunction that occurs between the two giant planets of our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn. Um, and the con conjunction of these two planets actually um, is quite infrequent compared to conjunctions of, of all the planets, occurring once uh, every 20 years, or to be more precise, every 19.86 years. So why this frequency? Well, Jupiter orbits the Sun in just under 12 years while Saturn takes much much longer than that uh, 29 and a half years to orbit the sun so Saturn keeps moving away from Jupiter in the sky until Jupiter eventually essentially laps Saturn so Jupiter closes the gap um, between itself and Saturn by about 18 degrees um, per year so it takes 20 years to make that full 360 degree orbit and catch up uh, with Saturn and that is the frequency of the Great Conjunction. So what will we see um, in the night sky on the 21st of December, which is actually the same day as the winter solstice? Well, I've put a mock-up on the screen now of, of, of what we'll see through my telescope. So I have a Celestron C11 telescope. Um, with a, This is the view through the 40 millimeter eyepiece, which gives a magnification of about time 70 uh, in the field of view in, in, in that white ring. Um, so this is what we should expect to see just a bit a bit more context on that separation that we'll expect to get so the separation between Jupiter and Saturn will be just six arc minutes and seven arc seconds apart and that'll be the closest approach of the two planets uh, in the night sky for, uh, since 1623 um, so it really will be quite a rare event if people aren't familiar with the scale of this, I'm just going to pop onto the screen um, the moon, so that will give you a bit of reference there. So the the field of view of my scope is 0 0.7 degrees, the moon's about 0 0.5 degrees across, um, and the separation that we're going to see is 0 0.1 degrees. So that is sort of similar to the Imbrian Basin, which is shown here, so that's roughly about 0 0.1 degree Um across so if we put that onto the uh, separation between the planets you can kind of see for reference what that actual separation will look like um, in the sky and that should be um, resolvable to the naked eye it's going to be a challenge for a couple of reasons so um, firstly the uh, brightness of Saturn so Saturn will just be uh, magnitude 0.6 at sunset uh, on the 21st of December and Jupiter outshining it by magnitude minus 2.7. So that could be a challenge to resolve them because Saturn would appear 10 times fainter by then um, to Jupiter. Also, the actual position in the sky. So at sunset, the planets are, are just three, uh, 30 degrees elongation from the sun. And that's um, just after sunset at about uh, 5 
45 GMT. So the best time probably uh, to observe uh, the two is probably around uh, four o'clock in, in the evening when they certainly Jupiter should start to pop out. But you've probably only got an hour and a half um, before um, the planet is set. So they'll be low down, just 13 degrees above the horizon. Um, so the more experienced observers, you might want to try and observe this during the daytime. Um, and we'll put the usual precautions here in when you're observing using the telescope when the sun is above the horizon. You're extremely careful in doing that. But that might give um, a better opportunity to, to view this event. But again, just 13 degrees um, 30 degrees elongation from the sun, so do watch out and be careful if, if you're attempting that. So historically, why is this um, conjunction so great? Well, we have to go back to the 17th century to find a closer conjunction uh, to 1623, um, which is actually only a few years after the invention of the telescope, which is why I mentioned earlier, this event may be the closest that anyone has ever actually seen the planets through a telescope. So 1623 the conjunction was the separation was five arc minutes and ten seconds so compare that to our six arc minutes and seven seconds so slightly closer um, but the actual event was very difficult to observe um, and it's likely that 1623 conjunction wasn't observed with a telescope since Galileo um, observing from Italy the two planets would only been a degree above the horizon um, at sunset and only 13 degrees um, from the sun. Indeed, papers written in the Royal Astronomical Society's monthly notices in 1856 and also in the Journal of the British Astronomical Association in 1896 say that the 1623 event wasn't actually observed and it's quoting there that the planets were being lost into the sunshine. So I've put together um, some slides just showing the position of uh, the conjunction between Saturn and Jupiter um, over each conjunction starting in 1623. So you can see here the two planets. Now I've centred here on Jupiter in the centre, so Jupiter will remain in the centre as we go through all of the conjunctions and you'll see that separation, or relative separation of Saturn ch change as we go through um, the conjunction. So the first one there, uh, 1623, when I said that that separation um, was slightly closer than the one we've got uh, coming up, at just five arc minutes and ten seconds. So I'm just going to scan through now and show you the separation um, in those 20 year cycles. And we can see one or two interesting um, conjunctions when one or two other planets join the party. So here in 1723, Mars shows up quite close to the conjunction that can be turned a triple conjunction um, but you can see there the moon also in, in view but a very very thin phase so that shows you that many of these conjunctions are actually difficult to to observe because of their proximity relative to the sun and also here's a conjunction in 1742 when the planet um, the star regulus makes an appearance again another time it's termed a triple conjunction and many of the uh, conjunctions feature this star um, if we scan through to the conjunction of 1821 this is um, one of um, what's termed a typical triple conjunction uh, which roughly occur at about one in six of the um, great conjunctions, a, a triple conjunction. So that occurs when the Earth is on the side of its orbit that's closest to Jupiter uh, and Saturn. So a, a triple conjunction, essentially, you get the retrograde motion of the planet. So Jupiter uh, can actually pass Saturn um, as it traverses east, then the retrograde motion kicks in uh, and they start moving in a westward direction to get the second conjunction. And the third conjunction occurs when that retrograde motion starts the passage of the planet Jupiter eastwards again. Um, and those usually occur within the space of, of, of a year. But there, say one in six of, of, of the conjunctions are triple conjunctions. And we've got that one in 1821 and also in 1940 and straight 41 and 
1980 and 81. So I'm not sure how many of you have seen the Great Conjunction before, but we've certainly got a spectacular one coming up, and that's showing the view relative to all of the other conjunctions that we're likely to see. So I've just quickly put on here the most uh, narrowest separation between the planets, so that central green circle, and the widest separation, which occurred in that 1941 conjunction. And you can see the planets moving around within that circle over the 400 years of great conjunctions that I've plotted. And then finally, here I've plotted on the minimum separation of all of those great conjunctions between 1603 to 2020. So you can see the conjunction of 2020 just slightly outside that ring of the one in 1623. So conjunctions um, have historical importance. So the great conjunction of 1563 was observed by Tarko Brahe. And he measured the change in separation of the two planets over a period of time. And his measurements actually what were used to enable Johannes Kepler to establish his laws of planetary motion. But looking at the minimum separation, you see, well, why is there that variation? Well, that's explained by the orbits of Jupiter and Saturn, which are inclined uh, to one another with respect to the Earth. So uh, Jupiter's inclination is 1.3 degrees and Saturn 2.5 um, so that is the reason why we have this uh, range of separation at each conjunction. If they were in the same plane, then they would pass uh, directly in front of each other. Um, I thought well, that was quite interesting. Would uh, Jupiter ever occult Saturn? Um, looking back through history, difficult question to answer. The, probably the closest to that happening um, that we can be confident about was 1793 BC, when the separation was just 1.5 minutes. So remember, this year it's just a little over six. Uh, and this was actually classed as a naked eye merge of the planet. So you couldn't resolve the separation uh, of the two. So it was classed as a naked eye merge, but it wasn't actually um, an occultation. Difficult one to answer, and I've had a look online. Um, and I think the general consensus is the ephemeral data that a lot of the planetariums are based on uh, to calculate this are really dubious when you go far enough out uh, for this event to occur. Um, but here it is anyway uh, in the year uh, 11,663 BC. And here it does show that we had an occultation event uh, with Jupiter occulting Saturn. So whether that actually happened, not quite sure, but I thought it was interesting just to show that. So it really will be an event to keep your eyes out for um, over the coming months, really, into December. Um, and hopefully we'll all manage to get a few images uh, of this event. Um, fingers crossed for clear skies on the 21st of December. <laughs>